question number five. Uh, here we have an, a relationship between an nth term and an n minus second term. And we're given that the first term is zero. Want to find a n in terms of the zero term and zero. So what I would do first here is solve for the nth term in terms of the n minus second term. So I brought my m minus second term over to the right side of the equation and then divided both sides by n squared. So I have the nth term is the n minus second term times negative one divided by n squared. And then I said, well, let's see what some of these terms look like. I started with the second, when, when n is two, the second term, because that'll give me a uh, zero term here. 2 minus 2 is 0, uh, divided by 2 squared. And I get the second term is the 0 term opposite of the 0 term divided by 4. Then for the third term, the third term is going to be the opposite of the first term divided by 9. And the first term was defined to be 0. And so I get 0 for the third term. On the fourth term, I get the opposite of the second term divided by 4 squared, where the uh, second term was the opposite of a 0 divided by 4. So these two negatives will cancel out to give you a positive. And 4 times 16, here you combine these by multiplying, uh, gives you 64. So you get the zero term divided by 64 is a fourth term. And then the uh, fifth term is the opposite of the third term divided by 5 squared, where the third term is zero. So notice that every odd term you get zero. a3 is equal to 0, a5 is equal to 0, and you're going to get a7 equals a9 is 0, a1 equals a3, a5, a7, and every odd term is going to be equal to 0. Uh, the sixth term is the opposite of the fourth term divided by 6 squared. And here I wanted to look for a pattern. So uh, the fourth term was a0 divided by 64. And my number started to get really large. So I went back and I said, well, 64 came from 4 times 16. Sixteen is four squared, and the four came from two squared. So I've got sixty-four is from four squared times two squared, two times four squared, and then thirty-six is six squared. So I, I see that my denominator here. I suspect that for my uh, my next term when n is 8, n7 is going to be a 0. When n is 8, I should get my 8th term is positive a to the 0 divided by, and my denominator is going to be 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 squared. And so I kind of see a pattern, or several patterns going, going on. All the odd terms are 0. On the even terms, I have a0. I have the opposite a0 divided by 4. I have a0 divided by 64. I have negative a0 divided by whatever 2 times 4 times 6 squared is. And I should have uh, a0 divided by 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 squared. 
So there are several things that I need to take into account, and I tried to take them all into account in terms of one equation. So let me explain this equation. Uh, this first part of the equation takes into account, actually all the way to the negative 2, all the way to the, to the divided by 2. This takes into account the uh, 0 for the odd terms. Notice that for uh, n equals 0, this first part becomes 1 plus negative 1 to the 0 power divided by 2, and negative 1 to the 0 power is 1, so you get 1 plus 1, or 2 divided by 2 gives you 1, just that first part. And for n equals 1, this first part becomes 1 plus negative 1 to the first power, and then divided by 2. Negative 1 to the first power is negative 1, and 1 plus negative 1 gives you a 0. 0 divided by 2 gives you 0. So for every number, for every uh, accounting number, this 1 plus negative 1 is either going to give you 2 whenever this exponent is even, negative 1 to an even power is 1, so you get 1 plus 1 is 2, or whenever this exponent is odd, you'll get negative 1, which added to 1 gives you a 0. So this first part right here either gives you 1 or 0, and that cancels out all of your odd terms. So you get this a1, a3, a5, a7 gives you 0, otherwise you get 1. The next part, this negative 1 to the n over 2, this is used for the, uh, the negative or the positive in front of each term. So this is for your, your even terms. Uh, we're going to look at n equals 0, and n equals 2, and then n equals 4 to see the pattern. At n equals 0, you're going to get negative 1 to the 0 power gives you a 1. And notice that your 0 term is just a to the 0. At n equals 2, you're going to get negative 1 to the 2 divided by 2, or to the first power, gives you negative 1. So on your second term, that gives you the negative in front. And then n equals 4, you get negative 1 to the 4 divided by 2 is 2, gives you a 1. So the fourth term, again, is positive. And then for the sixth term, you'll get an exponent of 3, which will give you a negative, and so forth. So this gives you the plus or minus. This gives you, uh, the first part gives you 0 or 1 as the answer. The second part gives you the plus or the minus. And then this a0 is because each term is defined in terms of a0. So I have the a0 there. And then the denominator gives you the, the 2, 4, 6, 8 squared. And to get this denominator, what I did is I took my denominator here, knowing that it continues on, and I said, well, this is the same as uh, if I pull a 2 out of the bracket, uh, I pull a 2 out, then this is 1 times 2, times 3, times 4. That's a nice factorial type of thing. Everything's squared. Well, actually, I, I'm not pulling a 2 out. Here I'm pulling a 2 out uh, n times. 
two from here, two from here, two from here. Let me let me do that a little bit better. Uh, if I take this denominator, two times four times six times eight, and that denominator is squared, then I can write two as two times one. Four is two times two. Six is two times three. Eight is two times four and I can pull these twos out. So in this case I'm going to have two to the fourth and then times one times two times three times four. All of that's being squared and this two will go with the two to the fourth and this two as the exponent will go with my one times two times three times four squared. Now in this case n is eight so notice that um, that should be four times two the two from there two to the fourth and then raised to the second power so notice that this is the nth power, 4 times 2, n. That gives me my 2 to the n. And then n divided by 2 factorial, for all of our n's, n is going to be an even number. Otherwise we get 0 as, a res as the uh, output. n divided by 2, in this case, would give me a 4 and 4 factorial is 1, 2, 3, 4, all multiplied, raised to the second power. So that's the second part. And so let's test this to see if we get the, the 1 for a to the 0 term and the 4 for a squared, a 2 term, and the 64, and then the 2, 4, 6 squared. So I'm going to go here, n equals 0. So for this part, I'm going to get 2 to the 0 power times 0 over 2 factorial squared for my denominator. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 0 divided by 2 is 1. And 1 factorial is 1. 1 squared is 1. That gives me the 1 as a denominator for this a0 term. And that checks. For my second term, I'm going to get 2 to the second power times 2 over 2 factorial squared by using this formula. And 2 to the second power is 4, and 2 over 2 is 1. Uh, 1 factorial, again, is just 1. That gives me a 4 as a denominator for my second term and that checks. And then for my fourth term, I'm going to get 2 to the fourth times 4 over 2 factorial squared. 2 to the fourth is 16 and 4 over 2 is 2, so I get 2 factorial squared. That gives me 16 times 2 times 1 squared, that's 2 squared is 4, uh, 16 times 4 gives me a 64 for my fourth term denominator and that works and, and it will work for the other terms as well. So it's a little bit of trial and error to see what will work and what won't work and you have to break this apart to see what kind of patterns you have to come up with the formula that you need. But uh, this is one way that you can define the answer. Uh, another way, maybe a, a simpler way, might be to define this as a piecewise defined function. You could say an is equal to 0 if n is odd. 
and is equal to, if I take this 0, 1 part out and keep the rest of it, I've got negative 1 to the n over 2 a0 divided by 2 to the n times n over 2 uh, factorial squared if n is even. And you could use this definition too. There may be other ways that you could you could come write this relationship, but this is the one that, that made the most sense to me. So either this form or this form, either one. 